Welcome back. Another week of the happy hour. Hey. David, what's up? Man, I am running late today. I'm sorry that we're tuning in late. Um, we are just trying to get everything up and running. Been at uh, Top Golf, see, right? Top Golf here. I'm going to tune in up, and turn my volume down. So, yeah, we had a little company event this afternoon at Top Man, Golf. Man, you're getting to be a VIP out there, aren't no. you? No. Well,. No, no, no. They they, they see, love your money. They see my swing and they're like, Whoa, "Let's put this guy at the end of the row." That's good. Ash and Gustafs in the pride of Wichita Falls. There uh, we go. Not Kansas or wherever the other Wichita Falls. That's Texas. Marissa Amazing Burn. guy, Amberly. What's Amberly happening? Uh, everybody's so, yeah. favorite pharmacy, by the way. So I am running late today. Apologize. We had we had a little uh, mortgage bank event at Top Golf. Uh, a little. Uh, just kind of relaxation for I got to your company. office and there was no one here. There's nobody. Well, there's a couple of people here. But, Absolutely. You know, it's funny because it's in the March, uh, so it's a tough day to do it. But, you know, we tried to sneak it in, tried to get everybody some fun and, and hanging out. And but you, a good time. But, you know, the good news is it's happy hour. And you know what time it is? It's time oh, for a little Jamaica man, Red at, Stripe this week. These. There look we go. A little these. Red Stripe. I mean. There we go. Awesome. I, got, I love this. I mean, call your... I gave Collier. I put Collier in charge of picking up the beers this week, and he picks up these super well, slugs. Well, I only know one way. I mean, right, Milton? What's happening, Milton? Uh, you know our good friend from Celebrity, good dude. Hey, Nick Baker. Hope you're ready for the game tonight. Nick Baker. Big game for Kentucky. Hey, we do have some games tonight. Big time. Who, yeah. Who's Kentucky's at Kansas State? I believe, right? I think so. I yeah. think so. It's going to be exciting. NCAA's rolling on. Absolutely. How are the Baylor Bears doing there, uh, Mr. Gustafson? Are they even in? Jamaican beer. Yes, Milton Palacio likes the Jamaican beer. Hey, yes. absolutely. He's tasted probably all of them. Kate I Griffin. tell you. That's right. Is Kate, Kate here? Yeah, Kate Giffen. Griffin Giffen. Kate Giffen, Griffin Giffen? Yes. I, I, now, let me ask you a question. What are the odds, if you were placing odds, that Kate, I always get it confused, Kate Griffin, Griffin would marry Kate Giffen and just drop the R? I don't know if Kate Griffin married Kate Giffen, but no, no, she was didn't. Kate I, guess, I don't guess. Right? But it is Griffin Giffen. Catlanta. He's over in Catlanta. Cat Cody Clemens A. Oh, FSU. FSU. I think he's playing tonight. I Big time, are. right? Yeah. It's going to be some good games. It's going to be exciting. Not as exciting as last Thursday and Friday, but... I mean, Auburn kept it real, didn't they, in that second Loyola. game? We got Loyola tonight, too. Loyola, yep. Chicago. Say that fast 14 times. Well, what do you think about Auburn? We, we really came to play the other night. You know, Auburn struggled, <laughs> but they're, they're a young team. Uh, first time being back in the tournament for... For a long time, man, it's 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 tough, man. It's a big stage. We say that about every sport we have. We're almost there. Well, I can't bring Georgia Tech into this. No, because y'all are y'all cardiac yeah. arrest right we, on we, out. We, I mean. we even lost our best player in the in the off season. That's only like two weeks old. Absolutely. Yeah. So what a great team. Yeah. Well, let's get, get you excited. Well, let's get at you know one thing I want to talk about real quickly that I had a client happen to a client and wanted to talk to everybody about is called SIM card hijacking. And one of the interesting things is you remember the Equifax data breach that we had. What yes. was that in the last year? That well, it didn't just happen. They hit it from the American public and all that. But the next stage of all this is there's Shannon. Go, David. All right. Hey, yes, Shannon. Well, the next, Good to see you, buddy. the next stage of this fraud is what we call SIM card hijacking. Because they, remember, they have all this data, right? And what ends up happening oftentimes is what do we, what do, we do when we go to any of our private accounts? We have a private uh, inner six numbers, double fact, two-factor authentication. And what ends up happening is they'll text you a number to, this, to your cell phone. So what these crazies have done is mm. they've realized real quickly that they can, uh, if they can get just hold of your cell phone account, guess what? They have the keys of the city. They have your social. They have your address. They have all that, right? And so what they're doing is they're literally taking that same information they got, they got from the Equifax data breach, walking into, say, the T-Mobile store. No, got T-Mobile was the yeah. carrier, but it could happen to any of them. Right. Walks in with all the real data, and guess what? For e even 10 minutes... The service is switched over to the new SIM card in the new phone, and ends, what ends up happening is, guess where that confirmation email from your bank or whoever goes to the new phone. Goes to the new phone. You confirm it, you get access, and then you're you're off and running. Absolutely. So one way to combat this is uh, to go to your carrier, AT and T, T Mobile, Sprint, whatever, Cricket. I love the name Cricket. I don't know Cricket why. Wireless. Hey, it's cheap, um, but it's AT and T really, I think. But. Uh, Anyway, they also have a pin, a secondary pin. Make sure you set it because 
the headache that this guy has been through in getting this fixed has been crazy. So just a food for thought, because I had never even thought, hijacking my phone? Yeah, well, I, I can only imagine the identity theft and how, how prominent it is, and there's so many, uh, so many things. I mean, to me, it's just a hassle to reset all of this stuff, and I know that sounds weird, but it's even like a, like a fender bender, you know, in, in a, a car wreck. Like, it's more of a hassle just yeah. to sit there for three hours waiting for the police to come and insurance and doing all this stuff. Now, I know identity theft can be much worse than that, but... Man, no, but this is the keys to the city. I mean, because yeah. right now, the two-factor authentication is is where we've kind of gone to to protect us. Yeah. And these idiots are going to start hijacking the SIM card. Yeah. Now, I love for my wife today. She didn't even know what a SIM card is, by the way. She's a smart girl, but doesn't know what a SIM card is. I don't Sometimes know why that matters. You take, you take for granted how, how easy it is to get information. But I wanted to to, to speak to Shannon Fitzpatrick on on – he's my buddy out in – Las Vegas, Nevada. Man, they hopping, aren't they, right yeah, now? Yeah, he's hopping. He's got a, a a team of real estate agents he's bringing on board, and and those guys are busy out there. I mean, they're. I talked to his wife today. She's a real estate agent as well, and uh, she says she's been working like twenty five days nonstop, writing multiple contracts. Are these out of state people? What are they? What are they typically? Who are these buyers? Yeah, I mean, but it's I mean it's similar to our market, but they probably do have more out of state buyers, but but still writing multiple offers on on properties and just just working all the time trying to get things. But but there's so much competition. There's there's so many offers on each property. That's, yeah, that it's really tough to get things nailed down and get that in there. Absolutely, uh, Larry Coates, so if you're there, go blue. There. Uh, Christy Campbell. Yeah. All right, Christy from Ty, HRA. Ty, Day. Tyler Young's letting us know Loyola, Texas A and M, UK, Gonzaga. That's your winners today. Okay, <laughs> parlay them up. So Tyler, so Ch- Shannon can take those picks to the casino. Loyola, A and M, UK, Gazette. If anybody's ever been to a casino with this guy, that knows that you know the ideal situation would be to take each one of those individually. Yeah. Oh, not you. No, <laughs> all together or none at all. Listen, the stock market dropped seven hundred because I made a purchase yesterday. Okay, yeah, that's what happened. And tell everybody what your pick was. Microsoft. Microsoft. It was huh? for my son. Really? Yeah. Microsoft. Hey, he loves the Xbox. It's his. It well, was his. It was his uh, money. Was it? Was it? Uh, old boy in Omaha says, "Buy what you know." Buy what you know. He he is pumped up about the next Call of Duty release. When's it's that coming out? Uh, later this year, and it's. I guess they alternate between Xbox and PlayStation, and there Xbox has strike. the next one. So Xbox is getting. The Call of Duty, so he's thinking. That so they're ahead good. of the game curve, right? He'll think he'll, he'll think that's good for the stock. All right, let's hop into some real estate. What do you say? Let's do it. All right. Well, one of the big things going on right now, and I'm telling you, it happened because I haven't had a seller call me the other day, and you know, she said, uh, "Okay, we had four showings, and here's exactly what happened." And I'm like, "Man, how you know, right?" Yeah, right. And and it dawned on me, there. you're not supposed to be there. You're not supposed to be there, right? right? So I was not there. And this is a message to anybody that's actually buying houses out there right now. And, well, I'm just going to be blunt. Shut up when you're in the house, right? Because they're listening to you. And some of the ways that they, these sellers are listening to you, and you're giving away all your competitive advantage. The because buyers are. The buyers are giving away all of it because they're sitting in there going, oh, I love it. This is to die for. There's nothing better, and by golly, we'll pay up to full list price and even give them some more money. Did they have that recorded, or did it just happen to overhear that? Uh, no, they didn't have it recorded. They had the baby monitors going. Oh, there you which go. Which is perfectly legal, by the way. As an attorney, I'll tell you. I mean, this is perfectly legal. It's their house, right? True. I mean, you know, but one of the things is that, and one of the other things that we say, it used to be just security systems that had these cameras, but now, like, uh, what is it, uh, Wise camera the wise camera uh, it's wyze camera 20 bucks you can get on amazon uh for, for a camera that's internet tied into the internet man that's that's awesome and looks like it blends in with all your other can stuff you hook it up to your phone and, and see what's going uh, on and that's what's happening that's perfect right and so but what's funny is that buyers can't help themselves right yeah, yeah. i love it man and they want to talk comps while we're sitting in there i mean half the time they're wanting to sit down on the couch and the sofa you know and all that now do I blame the sellers? Not in a million years. It's a competitive advantage. Yeah, the they sellers have. would want to know that information. That they would, uh, they they would love that information. Shannon's even saying, "Yeah, don't talk in the home with clients." I, I mean, it just makes sense. Not anymore. I yeah. mean, and you know, it's it's funny. The uh, 
the, even if it's part of the security systems, I mean, the security systems have gotten so easy to install. It's not like you have to have them wired anymore. I don't even think hardly any of them wire them. I mean, you got Simply Safe that you that most people are going to. Low monitoring cost. Yeah. Fairly inexpensive equipment. It's amazing the technology nowadays and how easy it is. And you can just plug it right into your phone and be watching the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. And, and you know, it's like the Ring Video Doorbell. Uh, you know, uh, that's totally changing things. So, and it's not just there anymore, right? I mean, I think that a lot of us tend to not think anything's there. Now, the funniest I ever saw was some dude had his hunting, like, what do you call those? Uh, the uh, where they can see the wildlife out there. I mean, this thing was big. Yeah, and he had it sitting up there. I was like, well, that, that's a little obvious. <laughs> yeah, uh, now, I have seen the motion sensors for hunting, but the, the infrared or the it's night, an lights. night camera. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so camera. this is a big thing, right? Yeah. You know, and uh, well, it's he a had big, that. huge, obvious thing in the middle of your living room. I mean, it's going <clears> to stand <throat> out. I mean, you know, one thing I pulled. I mean, just look at. And the other thing is too. I would think that two, three years ago, we would have been thinking, oh, only the rich houses have them. I love that the rich houses. What's yeah, that it's mean? It's more anymore? affordable now. I mean, look at these prices. It's twenty five. Well, I, I got a list here of the of the top ones. Look at that. Twenty five, forty nine, one twenty seven, one seventy six. I mean, all the way up to five hundred. Yeah, easy to install, cheaper price easy. point. Price point's great. And the fact you have a baby monitor. Baby yeah. monitors are sitting there. Anybody can have this. Cognito. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, anybody can have it. And I just think that that, that one of the things that that we're hired to do is create value and to also formulate a game plan and we can't do that if the buyer's yeah. out talking too much. Right and now it it is a seller's market. They may have multiple offers but still you don't want to give them, you don't want to tell them that you're going to pay full list price when, Plus you, 10. when, you, when you walk through yeah. the house, right? Well, I, I just want to look at the house and yeah. it's not that we blame the buyers, it's just that the buyers got to understand for their own yeah, uh, and the funny thing, safety. the funny part about it is that it, it is an emotional purchase. I mean, this is Absolutely. your home, right? And you're buying this for your your family. Um, we, we're in the business every day, so it's a business thing for us. But you know, those emotions get involved, and that's what brings those comments out and yeah, makes people react absolutely. that way, right? Absolutely. And, and you know, I think that if we really knew what they were, if we knew they were hearing, what would we say, right? I mean, I, I think too, it also helps. Keep people to respect somebody's house too, knowing that they're listening. I, I think that too, and oh, it speeds yeah. things along. I mean, if they know that you're not going to go lounge on the couch or play with. Uh, now, we'll tell you, I'm a sucker for the Papa shots. You got a Papa shot? This guy. You're, you're, you're hey, this guy's shot. playing. <laughs> I mean, and I'm hitting the button go. Baby, baby mamas. Monitors, baby. baby mamas. Look at there that. Hey, Carrie. Carrie Ballinger. Uh, oh, Carrie Ballinger. Cheers. Little red stripe, one of your favorites, I'm sure. And it's not a little red stripe. It's a big one. Two for the price of one, one pint. Two for one. All right, let's move on to the Fed. Man. What happened? I'm telling you, this was a big moment this week. Um, Jerome Powell is his name, the new Fed chair, okay, came in. Federal Reserve. There's Courtney, she's checking in. Just wanted, I wanted to show her the big the red stripe, make sure <laughs> she saw what Collier yeah. produced. Sorry, Courtney. He's, he's on top of it. So listen, the Fed spoke this week. Um, they raised their federal funds rate by a quarter of a point. What does that which mean? Which was expected. Okay, it raised up to a range of 1.5 to 1.75. That's an overnight lending rate. That's a short-term rate between banks. That's when banks and credit unions lend money to each other. That counts as two. <laughs> oh, Dubendorfer. Love that guy yeah. right there. Jason I, Dubendorfer. Who is calling us out? I think I think she is, oh, but man. Dubendorfer, love to see him. Uh, that guy's awesome. Up he can't Tennessee. finish two beers though. So, so listen, the, when the Fed when the Fed's moving this rate, um, we're moved up by a quarter of a point. The market was really expecting it, uh, so now we're at one point five to one point seven five. The federal funds rate that's the overnight lending rate between banks. Now, is it directly tied to mortgage rates? No, because our mortgage rates actually this morning did not get worse. Okay, there was a. a Really, what what we're looking for and what the market's looking for is the the, the language of the message. What They're kind they on every word he says. Yeah. Right? What is the Fed saying when they deliver this? So basically, they're saying the economy is still improving. Right. Um, they're they're moving the rate up now. They still expect two more moves. They were at three, right, for which, the rest of the year. Yeah. Which yesterday and then two more would be three. Still, they're teetering on four. Okay. And then they did improve, increase their projection for 19 and 20. So right now at 1.75. Uh, 
And by the end of 19, almost 3%, and right. another half percent in 2020. So what does this mean? Well, what does it mean to, to the individual? I mean, that's what I'm wondering. So let me, let me tell you, when the Fed rate dropped to 0% back in December of 08. Okay. And we, that was the meltdown. We stayed there for seven years. Okay. So now we're finally moving back up. So the economy's moving, and we've got projections now in the next 12 to 24 months of this rate continuing to rise. So it stayed put for seven years, and now we're moving. So that means the economy's doing well, and everything is, is, is they're trying to keep things on track. Okay. So what that means is basically credit card rates, student loan rates, uh, car loan rates, all of these interest rates, adjustable mortgages. Because let me ask you this: Is that because they're tied to the prime rate, which is tied also to? Well, well, prime rate is directly tied to the Fed funds rate, which means. Yeah, another big thing is equity lines. Okay, oh, yeah. if you got equity lines out there, those are definitely going to be going up. So you may want to call me and talk about refinancing those into a fixed rate. Well, you know, what? it's interesting you say that because I pulled those numbers. Uh, if you had fifty thousand dollars. This quarter of a point will mean ten to eleven dollars increase in monthly payment. Yes, that's if you only had fifty. Yeah, and that's probably an interest only payment. Probably, that's right. Now, one thing that will happen automatically is going to be your credit card rates, and you'll probably get these uh, statements in the mail next month that they'll say your credit card rates are increasing. So, this is uh, is, is is kind of an indicator in the economy, but it's going to affect and, and filter through to a lot of interest rates. It's a little slower moving into the 30-year fixed rate. So so think about this. You've, you've got the uh, credit card rates, which are monthly, right? Absolutely. And at their highest point so, they've ever been. Yeah. So, so the Fed funds rate that they just moved is an overnight lending rate. Credit card rates are monthly. 30-year mortgage rates, obviously, are longer term. So it's going to take a little while longer. They're not directly correlated, but they are in the same family. In the same family, but yeah. it'll be a slower burn to get to us. Exactly. Now, you know, one thing that's interesting is that, uh, you know, the questions come up, uh, well, what does this mean for my savings account rate? You know, because you go into any of these big monster mega banks, and what do they say? Uh, you know, these guys are saying, uh, we're going to keep it at 0. 0.4, 0. 0.0, well, however you look at it. Zero on, point on, four on savings rate. On savings rate. Yeah. The problem is, remember, the banks are getting the benefit of this. Yeah. And are not passing it on to you, the consumer. That's why Capital One Three Hundred and Sixty, Ally Bank, all these online banks, Discover Bank, are the places to put savings. Man, I tell you, and, and Courtney will 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 attest to this. Ally Bank is yep. one of our favorite. With their, they've got savings rates on the checking accounts. Oh, absolutely. So, so which is really good. By the way, she's an expert on our own. You know that stuff really is. Be, yeah. Really is. But queen is cheap you know, in a good way. Yes. Yeah, the, the interesting thing that I that hey, I hey Brittany was that we've got uh, and then and, and Dubendorfer came back with he's coming to she, town. He wants a six pack of these uh, red stripe, the double stripes. Of course, he would ask for an import. Oh, of course. But listen, I, what I think is interesting here is that they are already projecting um, in in 2019 and 20 the the moves that they're going to make on this rate. So obviously, rates are moving up. So the last uh, 10 years, we've had this uh, up and down. So, so rates would go up, and they come back down, and then they would bounce around in a range. They're right. definitely on the upswing. So, you know, I just talked to somebody yesterday. They were like, well, you know, I've got these plans to do this now, and then, and then maybe I'll refinance in, in three or four years. I mean, that's a good question Jason's asked. Should, should he refinance his mortgage? But right now, yes. Right now, I would definitely look but, at... But you said last week, who should, though? Who should? Okay, yes. so if you're already in... A, uh, a your current mortgage and you're looking to refinance into terms. So let's say you've been thinking about it for a little while and um, you want to look at the market. Well, you're not going to wait to refinance. But the guy I was talking to yesterday is buying a home now. He wants to buy a home, put a little bit down, and then maybe his, in- his income is going to increase. And then down the road, he wants to refinance. Don't go into a, don't go into a purchase right now thinking you're going to refinance in three or four years. That's just crazy. Yeah, because not only are you going to pay a higher interest rate, you're also going to have the closing costs again on the refinance. Wow. But but Dubendorfer, yes, and I can get you some numbers on that. Absolutely. And, and the and the other thing too, talk about you know one of the things is interesting is these these arms. I love that last name. Are going to Dubendorfer. Yeah, it's a great one. It is. He's German. <laughs> Has to be. All right. These uh, arms. Talk, talk about these arms. 
uh, so, not yours, but the these arms on these mortgages, five, ten, seven year arms, whatever they may be, they're going up. Yeah. But what are we going to see? Because it's not a straight return. I mean, if you're going to be in a house less than ten years, is there a case that can be made for an arm? Um, it depends on your time frame. So, you know, I just had had a scenario talking to somebody. Uh, that's in the medical profession and they're buying a house now and maybe they feel like in the next five years that their uh, income is going to be higher, higher and yeah. they're going to be uh, expanding the family. So in that situation, an arm, a five-year arm might make sense. Now you're still, you're still gambling that those things are going to happen just, as, just the way you plan. Now what happens if something changes and you need to stay in that house in five years? Then your rates are going to jump up. So, but now one thing to remember there, and I've always been saying this: it's not just five years, because there is a break-even point at which we were paying so much more down in principal that I may actually be at a seven-year break-even on a five-year arm, right? Yeah, yeah, and and you've got longer-term arms as well. You've got a seven-year arm, you got a ten-year arm, um, but some of those ten-year rates get really close to the the thirty-year rates. So sometimes that doesn't make sense, but. But definitely, there there is a market for the arms, and we haven't seen that uh, popularity much in the last ten years because it was so low on the fixed. Yeah, now, because rates have. Is been there so a discount low. they get from getting an arm in terms of closing costs or anything like that? No, typically, and, and and this might be a little more information than you need, but typically the the margins are tighter on the arms. So you typically have to pay, sometimes you have to pay a little more in closing costs on the arms. So, so really we need to be looking at the total cost of the loan, what we would call the APR, right? Yes. The total yeah. cost, what's it costing me? And Courtney, if you're on here, let us know your thoughts uh, on these arms. You think she's got an opinion? Oh, of course. <laughs> she may not share it with us, but she certainly yeah. has an opinion. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> i tell you what really ticks me off though are these banks that are not, these big monster mega banks not passing on those interest rate increases to the to the people that are providing the money for them to then loan out. Yes, yeah, and, and, and you know, one of the other things that you're speaking about, things that, that bug you, I heard a commercial this morning about no out-of-pocket closing costs on a refinance. That's still- No out-of-pocket costs. Still drives me nuts. Now, what, what's the catch, catch there? They're taking it out of your house, not out of your pocket. <laughs> okay, so you're still gonna pay another five or 10, another, you know, let's say four to $6,000. They're just gonna add it to your loan amount so you're not going to have to physically write a check, but they're taking it out of the equity of your house instead of taking it out of your pocket. So there's no out-of-pocket nah. closing costs, right? Well, it's all look. Everybody's no trying to play catch-up. It's up. all marketing. Well, in your well, and, and quite frankly, no, and that, that's more misleading to me than I'll pre-approve you. And I mean, the problem is, I think a lot of the local lenders are not, and y'all are not one of these, but there are some that are trying to react to the rocket mortgage with unbelievable calls to action that truly are unbelievable. Right. I mean, why are people still drinking Coca-Cola? Right. Because of marketing. Absolutely. So, I mean, we can sell anything in the United States and that's just another example. Absolutely. So, well, moving on. Yes. All right. Wanted to now, share with everybody talking about Uber. Did you man, see Uber had a... Uh, I saw the video. The video, yes. And the best is... The, now, let me ask you a question. If anybody doesn't know, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, there's a few areas in the country. And it's, that, a, it's, a, it's a terrible happening. No, no, it's okay. terrible. It's awful that this happened. But they have driverless vehicles. Look at Mario, Mario's ringing in with Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Shooting down my Coke. Uh, Thank you, Dubendorfer. Uh, they're running these pilot projects where they have driverless cars that are picking up passengers and everything yes. else. Now, yeah. the, the, where I was going with this is they do have a backup driver. Now, let me ask you a they question. They do have somebody in the driver's seat. But, and, now, and now Tesla had a problem with this, too. Yeah, but if somebody's crossing the road in front of you, when is it that the backup driver should back up? Man, and I'll, and I'll tell you, I'm just asking. from watching the video, it was really hard to, to see, see that person coming across the road because it it was in a dark stretch of okay. road. Okay, yeah. That's and it was enough. not in a... It didn't seem like, to me, that it was a regular crosswalk. So, so hey... Fair game, no, right? But dangerous. Oh, dangerous. Dangerous for the pedestrian. Yeah. They got run over. Ab well, no, it's a sad event, but at the same time, I don't want to see the innovation stop here because somebody... No, and I don't think the innovation is going to stop. I think we are moving towards driverless cars, and if Courtney's still on, she is praying that we have driverless cars by the time, by the time gets her daughter gets a oh, driver's sorry. license. So, yes, uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue, but we're going to have these... 
these kind of hiccups. It was absolutely it was a terrible thing. It was crazy. But here's the interesting thing that we that we were going to bring up today is that Uber is having an effect on auto sales and also the car rental companies that, quite frankly, financially, I find pretty fascinating that they can have this big of an effect on the number of people renting the cars in each city. And it's very dependent upon if the city's set up, not like Birmingham, where it takes you know a year to get from one side to the other in rush hour. Yeah. Right? Because it would cost too much, but you'd want to rent a car. But most of the major places we would go, Chicago, New York. I mean, and, those, and those are highly populated areas, right? Right. And so in highly populated areas, you have more people, obviously. But when you have more people, you've got more sales. So those are the areas where you would be selling more cars to individuals because you got one person per car. And it downsides to so the now, parking, right? if they start sharing, then that's obviously, that's where you're going, right? Yeah, If absolutely. they start sharing, then that's going to hurt the car sales because you've got multiple people. Absolutely. And then, you know, the other thing that's interesting is that the, you know, some of these rental car companies have invested and actually purchased like a zip car. I think one of them bought, maybe it was Avis, uh, that are found actually in Tuscaloosa has it, uh, where basically you go rent the car for the hour. You pay a membership fee that's very low. Insurance, everything's included. You rent it by the hour and $15 an hour. I think that's going to be, that's going to be a new thing. I mean, yeah. If, if Tuscaloosa can do it, that can tell you they're coming to more cities. Oh, yeah. The Absolutely. other the other thing here is that Toyota, Grab Car. If you're not familiar with Grab Car, is Uber's competitor in Asia, and because you know the Asians all they always have an answer to anything we of do. Of course, right? And yeah. It's a good thing. I mean, I like it. Yes. But Toyota has now. That's in, what keeps us sharp. Right. You know, I mean that that competition is what 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 keeps us sharp. And they probably look at us and think, you know, we're we're just over here having fun and, and partying and. What idiots! Yeah, they're just hanging out. Well, uh, you go get the lights, and I'll yeah. keep talking. The the uh, Ben Chenault, who owns Mortgage Bank, must have uh, turned them off on us yeah. uh, from his iPhone, probably as high tech as he is. It. But no, but the fact that the car dealers, or not the car dealers, but these car companies, Toyota, major investment in these companies, is telling me that they're even acknowledging they they would not invest in this if they didn't see a shift happening. And then the ultimate question, you know, when I brought it up to you earlier, is where are we going to see this this sharing economy into the real estate market? Where do you think we'll see yeah. some of that? Well, that, and, that, and that's interesting because you know another um, another article that we we shared today between us was the the fact that rents are going up, right? Mm-hmm. And so right now people are this market is tough with the inventory and interest rates going up, prices are going up. Um, it's taking longer to purchase, so. The, the average buyer may be going out looking at a couple houses, writing contracts, getting shot down, and they get frustrated and they're like, I'm done. I'll just rent yep. for a little while. So, you know, on the top of this story, what's to say that they don't kind of combine it and in, in, in kind of share houses in different cities and, and maybe come up with some type of Snowbirds, a, a, right? a Uber or a, or a sharing type of system? That, well, that, that is happen. the new model of the timeshare, right? Yeah. Where you're not obligated. I mean, the problem with the timeshare was it went into perpetuity, and it sucks when you couldn't yeah. get out, Yeah. right? But in this case, it's they have enough demand where they can keep it rented, but their options are there, uh, and it's just evolving. And I think you know one of the things that we talked about before is a lot of this sharing, uh, whether it be Mario car- liked the lights out. Yeah. Thank you, Mario. Uh, the car sharing, the ha- home <laughs> sharing, all these. Drew Schuler, how you doing, buddy? Is that is that these municipalities better get that's the Ford, right? And that's where we're headed. Yeah, in and some think, way, shape, yeah, or form. and I think in some in some cities, maybe areas, it, it, it could work, but it also could be, uh, you know, like you, you've got a house in four or five bedrooms and a couple of guest bedrooms, and you just you know rent those out or share those because there are a lot of. I mean, imagine these. You know, it's interesting. A lot of these big towns, I should say, you know, uh, where a lot of these young, a lot of the companies are renting these houses for them. They're leasing back bedrooms, like you say. You're a young professional. You're moving to a town. You don't know everybody. Man, how cool is that? You got built-in roommates that are working the same place. You're paying far less, keeping more of your money, able to get some retirement built up. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I don't see the downfall of all this, but yeah. uh, some people. It do. definitely could be a definitely could be a market there. Absolutely. Well, um, I know Drew Schuler. Good to see him, man. I went to high school with that guy. Really? Yeah, we had a uh-oh stories. Oh man, we had a lot of stories, but his. 
His Cadillac <laughs> was was the best. The Cadillac. Yes. The low riding? No, he had a beautiful Cadillac back in high school. Slick. What'd you drive? Yeah. Nothing nice. Nothing nice. No. A, a 82 Accord? <laughs> yeah. I think it was an 84 Dodge Omni. Dodge Dart. If you, you don't even know what that is. It's like similar to Wayne's World when yeah. they were driving around their little yeah. car with nine people in it. Yeah, kids won't even know what that is. Well, I know it's spring break for a lot of people. I'm headed down to Miami tomorrow Next to week, jump yeah. on a cruise. Cruising. Cruising. Where are you going? I'm coming back to work. Man, somebody's got to do it. My Man. team's still here. Man, he is... Living the dream. Living right? the dream. It's it's the life of Collier. Yeah, well, life I, I scheduled him so far in advance because I got one. You're going with us next year. Uh, next year, yeah. A year from now on the new ship, but... Uh, Man, we love celebrity, and they're so good to our kids, and you know how they are. I mean, yeah, uh, it's gonna be fun for you next. Week. Phenomenal, yeah. Headed down there, Key West. You need me to bring anything back? Anything? Probably. All right. Yes. Uh, so but, we're gonna try to hook up uh, next Thursday. Um, I'm gonna try to be there from Grand Cayman. Yeah, I'll so, try to do the Facebook. So line. we will uh, see you guys. Equinox, Milton, next calling it week, out. Milton Palacios. So thanks for tuning in. All right. Y'all have a safe week. Happy spring break and happy Easter. If I don't talk to you, if I can't get a signal down there, happy Easter. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Bye.